Hey, I'm Lana from Lana Glow Shot Art, and in this video, we will be unboxing the July 2024 Sketchbox. In this box, we will be celebrating World Watercolor Month with some fun color mixing and playful watercolor techniques. Ready? Let's go. The surface in this month's box is the Magnani Portofino Hot Press Watercolor Paper. We will paint on this smooth surface with our Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors, which come in yellow gold, alizarin crimson hue, and ultramarine. And we've got the Sketchbox Signature quarter inch chisel tip brush. Begin by squeezing your colors onto a palette. And if you have a dedicated watercolor palette, that's even better because these colors can continue to be used and reactivated with water after they dry. Here I'm swatching the ultramarine and I'm using the broad edge of my chisel brush to fill in this larger area. And then I'm exploring different ways to hold the brush and apply pressure to create a variety of different marks. Alizarin Crimson Hue is similar in intensity and consistency to the Ultramarine, whereas the Yellow Gold is much more transparent and has more of a metallic sheen. Let's explore color mixing using the Ultramarine and the Alizarin Crimson. Begin by sketching an odd number of boxes on your paper. I have five. Then on one end, paint the pure Ultramarine, and on the other, paint pure Alizarin Crimson. We are now going to create a scale of mixtures that transition between these two colors, emphasizing really even steps. On your palette, mix the two colors together until you create a violet mixture that is exactly in between your two original colors. When mixing a secondary color, it doesn't always require exact equal amounts of your primary colors to create a mixture that's in between. So play around and continue to check and see if the color is right in the middle. After you're happy with your violet and have applied it to the center box, you will create an even step or steps between your violet and your ultramarine. To do this, start with your pure violet that you've already mixed up and just add a little bit more ultramarine to a small portion of it. Save enough so that you can do the exact same thing on the other side by starting with your true violet and adding more of your alizarin. These colors in between are outer primary colors and the inner secondary color are tertiary colors. Next, we have the Faber-Castell Albert Durer watercolor pencil in walnut brown. This pencil can be used like a regular colored pencil or it can be activated with water and used more like watercolor. Let's use this pencil to sketch in an idea. The prompt for this month is travel. So using this as inspiration, I'm sketching in a tree I might see as I travel and explore this summer. Once I have the basic shape of my bonsai tree, I then come in with more pressure and begin to build up texture in the trunk of the tree. And I also begin to establish a light source. I want the light to be coming from the top left. So I'm starting to establish shadows accordingly. I have more dark values on the underside of the canopy of the tree and over towards the right. You can activate your watercolor pencil with water, but you can also activate your watercolor pencil with paint. And here I'm coming in with the yellow gold and I'm applying a light layer of yellow gold everywhere that the sun is hitting. I'm doing this with quick, short, even strokes that mimic the texture in the leaves and I'm allowing a lot of light to come through. Then I am mixing up a violet that I can use to create the shadows in the tree. I can let the water dry completely or if I want more of those wet on wet techniques, I can drop the color right in. I'm focusing my violet shade here in the shadow shapes and the darker local color like I see in the trunk. But when I move into the leaves of the tree, I'm using that same stroke. Just a quick dab or dot with my brush and I'm moving it in lots of different directions so that I really create that movement and that texture in the leaves. As you continue to progress throughout your painting, you might tweak your violet just a little bit. Throughout the tree, I have some areas that are moving a little bit more towards the red violet with more alizarin crimson and other areas moving more towards blue violet with more ultramarine. I let that first layer dry completely and then I came in with my watercolor pencil and began to intensify the darks a little bit more. Again, the watercolor pencil can be used dry and it doesn't have to be activated. So I could leave these very specific marks or I could soften them up later. I thought it would look nice to have a blue violet background. So I applied that with tons of water and then I came in with my yellow gold and just lightly activated some of the colored pencil mark that I had made in the branches. The 
last material in this box is the Winsor & Newton Fine Liner in Cool Gray. This fine liner is waterproof, so any sketches or details done with this pen will not move when the watercolor washes are applied over the top. It's a light gray color, which makes it a great option for subtle details or even for preliminary sketches. Now let's put all these materials together to create a painting of an oriental turtle dove, which is a bird that I might see if I'm traveling around Japan. I begin with my walnut brown watercolor pencil and create a loose sketch focusing on the basic shapes. And then I begin to add more and more detail once I feel really confident about the form that this drawing is taking on. I'm slowly building up more and more details in the feathers, but I don't need these to be exact and I don't need to draw every single feather. Rather, I just want an idea of where these feathers are going to be located and to kind of have a few landmarks to anchor myself. I want to begin with a really soft muted background. So I start with a bunch of yellow gold and add just a touch of ultramarine until I get this really nice soft green color. Then I apply water to the entire background so that I can do a wet on wet approach. This is going to allow the background to be a little bit softer and more atmospheric and it's going going to allow me to work at a little bit of a slower pace without having those edges that dry in between because the entire surface is wet. Using that green gold as a base, I'm making a darker version with more ultramarine and less water. And I'm using that to create a shadow shape along the neck and the chest of the bird. Once I have a very general shape, I'm using the brush to create different textures and more of a feather pattern. This dark color gets used throughout and then I water it down even more, add some more ultramarine and use this to enhance all of those areas in my reference photo that are more bright blue. Once I have a color mixed up on my palette, my goal is to use it throughout the entire subject so that it feels like everything is really cohesive. Then I move into that orange color and I create this reddish orange color with just a little bit of alizarin and tons and tons of yellow gold. Even with this big discrepancy in proportions, I still have a color that goes very, very red. And I use it sparingly throughout to add a little bit more warmth throughout the feathers. If anything gets too intense or too bright, I just lightly pull it off with a paper towel. Once this layer is completely dry, I grab my Winsor & Newton fine liner and begin to add more detail. These lines are not going to move at all. They're waterproof. So this is where I'm really taking my time to make the specific mark that I want. I'm using it to darken the shadows underneath the feathers to add a little bit more texture to the chest and to lightly outline the bird with a broken line. If I came in with a really thick line all the way around, it would feel very cartoon or coloring book, but with a broken line, I can add emphasis to different parts of the composition without overdoing it. Once those details are done, I grab my colored pencil, add a little bit of texture throughout the bird feathers, and then come right into the background. I wanted the background to become darker, so I did a few layers working with different watercolor washes and the watercolored pencil until I had the contrast that I wanted between the bird and the background. One of the amazing things about working with these materials is you don't have to have it right or perfect on the first pass. You can continue to come over layer by layer and until you get it exactly the way that you want. And now this piece is complete. I hope you learned a ton about working with watercolor and we can't wait to see what you create. So be sure to use the hashtag SketchboxJuly when you post your work online. For more unboxing videos and tutorials, you can check out our YouTube page where you can like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.